you're at the thrift store, you pick up that beautiful basket. You realize that you already have a basket for the purpose you thought you were buying this basket for. Now you have two baskets. Now you find another purpose for this basket. Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, doctor lawyer turned homeschooling mom of three kids ages 9, 5, and 4. I have been embarking upon a practical minimalism journey, mostly inspired by the fact that we downsized by over 2,000 square feet in the spring. And this month, for my one box challenge, I'm really proud to say that we actually created four boxes to give away, partly because we unloaded a whole lot of kitchen supplies. Now, if you had watched my kitchen declutter video from last year, you would know that my previous kitchen was gigantic, pretty much about as big as any kitchen I've ever seen in any home ever. <laughs> Um, and we had an enormous amount of cabinetry and I filled the cabinets and it looked really organized because really there were too many cabinets to fill. So I had ample room for every single pot and pan I ever owned for all the plates and cups and spoons and knives and party supplies, etc. This kitchen is approximately 25% of the storage space of our last kitchen. So I really did have to be conscientious about what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to get rid of. There had been a gigantic large size moving box labeled kitchen in the garage for the last 10 months or so. And so we just dragged it in. We took out all the pots and pans that were in there, all the random mismatched lids. And I just was kind of ruthless. If something didn't have a matching pot, the lid got donated. If the pots were at all damaged or dented or old or just had imperfections where I would choose not to use them to cook on, they got donated. Um, anything that I didn't use or had duplicates of got donated. For example, I had two colanders. One was plastic, one was metal. That got donated. Another one was copper, but we don't really use anything copper, so that got donated. Um, regardless of how nice or not nice the item was, I wanted to get rid of the things that I didn't have space for now. Whether or not we move later is not really the issue. We actually have maxed out on our storage space even in this house. Unless we continue to fill up the attic, which is really not my idea of a good time um we would just be continuing to take up storage space in the garage so my goal is really to just empty out the garage i understand that we might move back into a larger home at some point but you know what i can just buy those things then and for right now i can bless someone else with them who could buy pretty nice pots and pans for a goodwill or <laughs> thrift store kind of price so if you don't have the space in your home for things that you have valued in the past right now, really look at your life for what it is and your storage space for what it is, and I advise you to eliminate it. For the kitchen, that can be especially difficult because if you ask yourself, will I have the need for this one day or will I have use for this one day? The answer is almost always yes. I mean, one day you might actually be zesting lemons or one day you might actually need that particular size stock pot that you don't normally use. But if you haven't used it in like six months to a year, if it's not a regularly used item in your kitchen and you don't have the space to store it in your home, it's better serving its purpose in someone else's house. So let it go, let it flow through your house. Yes, you might have spent money on it, yes, it might have been a gift, but let it flow through your house to someone else. And if you start thinking of it like a way to bless someone else, like a really nice thing, a nice discovery that they could have at a thrift store or a Salvation Army, it really does ease that transition out of your house. So we got rid of a whole bunch of kitchen things. But this is like the fourth box of stuff. And I just wanna show you, just no particular order, some of the things that we have. This toy is actually really cute. It's a little orchestra turtle. If you press these individual buttons, it'll play the actual instruments. And right now it's playing an orchestra tune, but you can have just individual instruments too. And then if you play the, the treble clef in the middle, it'll play an actual complete tune. And I'll show you what's playing. Um, my kids have enjoyed this, but I think the time has come for it to move on to somebody else's house. And if you have a new baby, I really do recommend buying as few noise-making toys as possible. This was a gift to us, and while it's been nice, I'm happy to have that noisemaker out of our house. Quite a few of the things we're giving away this month are just old uh, clothes of my son's because I generally have him save all the clothes that he's grown out of 
um, in the back of his closet and then I go through them and decide what kinds of things the girls might use again and what kinds of things are a little bit too masculine for them and then we go ahead and donate those if they're in good condition. My littlest is tiny for her age so she hangs on to a lot of clothes that are like below her technical age size like she's four but she wears a lot of 3t and even 2t but she has been informing me that her 3t pants are too tight so we're getting rid of a bunch of those this is an adorable little sweater like a 2t sweater <laughs> and i really love it but see just because i love something doesn't mean i have to keep it even to remember how small she was or anything because i do have this tendency to want to keep all their adorable small clothes, but I try to limit it to like three or four items of baby clothes per kid. These are just little thermal pants that my middle daughter doesn't want to wear, so I'm like, okay, it's time for them to go. This is a cute little hoodie that they don't want to wear anymore. Some more leggings that she's outgrown. So this is a beautiful set of uh, nut seed beads that my um, friend who lives in Hawaii gave to me. For the girls and this is an example of one of those things where I would never pick it out to donate because it reminds me of my friend and it's just a lovely gift from them but since the kids get to choose what they want to donate every week for three things blessing I really try hard not to change their choices unless they really have a purpose in our house or unless they'd really serve a purpose for one of their younger siblings because that's part of it, right? It's part of being able to let go, even if a gift was given with great love, if it doesn't serve a purpose in your house. This was a gift to my daughter. If she no longer wants it, she should be allowed to give it away. Um, the fact that it holds like sentimental meaning for me isn't a good enough reason to keep the actual item. Because I know how much my friend loves me and my kids, whether or not we have this particular necklace. So I really do like to imagine someone finding it at a store and just being pleased and, and getting it for themselves and um, passing on the love that way. You know, it doesn't diminish the gift giver's love to actually give away the gift. Bunny ears that we probably got from the Target dollar spot or the Dollar Tree or something. Those are fun, but there's no reason to really keep them. These are little bike shorts that my daughter doesn't fit into anymore. Some more leggings that people have outgrown. Cat ears. A little noise-making monkey that um, I believe my mom gave to one of my kids. Can you tell why I'm happy we're giving it away? I'm really, really thrilled. A random hair bow that apparently has made the list. I'm like, fine with that. We don't have to keep hair bows. My girls actually don't like wearing that many hair bows, which is sad to me, but also kind of awesome. A music making book. I really dislike a lot of the Disney princess books anyway. The ones that make music, I dislike even more. So I was really happy when they picked that out for themselves. This is a pillow that I picked out from a thrift store once because it had the alphabet on it. I thought it would be really good to just sort of have it around in their room while um, my youngest was still learning her alphabet. But now she knows her alphabet. And my husband requested that we decrease the number of pillows in this house, so there we go, decreasing. This is another tiny little pillow that came in some gift set for something at some point, but we don't have cribs anymore. There's really no reason for tiny little crib pillows. This is one of their little Three Things Blessings. I think it was like a little toy purse. My daughter brought this down. This one kind of makes me sad because I love this book. This is Snoozers by Sandra Boynton. And um, it has seven little stories, but the cutest thing in the back is the little lullaby song, Go to Sleep My Zoodle, My Fibbledy Fitzy Foo. If you guys have this book, it is the cutest little book. And that makes me sad, but you know what? I think I'll always be able to get a Sandra Boyden book, like if I have grandkids, and I probably don't need the exact one that they read. This is a shirt, like a little plaid shirt that's not made out of any particular nice fabric. It's like some sort of synthetic that I probably picked up at Ross or something, but it doesn't quite fit me well. Like whenever I wear it, I'm a little bit uncomfortable. So I'm like, let's donate that. It's nice, but not nice enough to keep. Similarly, here's a gray shirt that falls into the same category. It's really pretty. It's a really nice, comfortable jersey material, but it just doesn't look that good on me. So it's time for it to move on to someone else. Here's a little sign that I used to have in the girls' nurseries. It says, wish, 
little signs like this, little chachis like this that don't have a particular place or meaning for me anymore um, are things that I am going to donate so they can move on. A couple more of my son's shirts that are ready to go. A tiny little baby blanket that I think came in a kit when either my middle or my youngest was born um, with some nice like baby lotions and things like that. The girls have been using them for a long time for their baby blankets, um, for their baby dolls, but they have moved on apparently because they selected it to give away. This is another one of those things that we picked up from a thrift store once that one of the girls must have chosen. It's a very pretty little box, but I think the time has come for it to go away. So even when they pick nice little things that have a purpose like that, if they've decided that they're over it, I let them be over it. Cat ears. This is one of those things that I picked up from a thrift store once. It's those things that you fill with water and stick into a pot. Unfortunately, it was always really, really hard to fill with water, and I never found that it held the water once I put it into the soil. Like It kind of emptied faster than it was supposed to, I think, so I'm going to go ahead and donate it, even though it's really pretty and I really wanted it to work. This is one of the best books ever. It's by Lloyd Alexander, The Castle of Lear. It's part of the um, Prudane series, so the the Black Cauldron, etc. Let's see. Um, the Black Cauldron, Terran Wanderer, and The Book of Three. Um, I actually have another copy of this, so I'm trying not to keep two copies of anything. This was a flower press, but we've lost one of these little turny things, and we're not super, super handy. And the turny screws were made out of wood for this one, so I'm going to donate it um, and get one with, that's made out of metal. This is a book that my son selected. It is a Marvel superheroes, like uh, level one and two reader, so way beyond what, what he's at now. And the girls aren't really interested in um, the Marvel superhero series at this reading level, so... We will donate it. A plastic cell phone. A couple more shirts of mine. One from med school. One that's just a great t-shirt that I no longer wear. I'm surprised my son's getting rid of this, actually. This is a um, Captain America shield thing. And it does something cool, see? And then you can, like, shoot out little, um, I think this way. Yeah, you can shoot out the little Nerf bullet thing. But if he thinks he's over it, he's over it. One more adorable little baby shirt. This one says, my parents are exhausted. Never a truer thing was spoken. But you can see, so this box is mainly things that the children have chosen from their own room. So here's two little toy cars, because no matter how small the thing, it still counts for three things blessing. So sometimes I get very, very small toys. But I am okay with that. And I don't really push, because so long as it's an it's a discrete toy in and of itself that counts for them. So all of these items are still in good condition and will be able to live on and have a more useful life than sitting there unused in our house. So I encourage you guys all to start doing a one uh, box challenge along with me. Basically, if you keep a box in your garage or in your master closet or just anywhere where Everybody just knows if you run across something that has no purpose for you, toss it in that box. If every single a weekend, every member of your household comes up with three things to bless someone else with, then that is, for our family, that's 15 things a week. That is 65 things a month. And an enormous amount of things, like over, over 700 things a year that we would be giving away from this house and I think that it's a really easy way to keep the clutter moving out because all of us have these weekends or days where we feel like incredibly inspired and declutter our closet or declutter the kitchen but if you don't make it a regular practice in your house that clutter just slowly builds up you know you're at Michael's you pick up this random picture frame you're at the thrift store you pick up that beautiful basket you realize that you already have a basket for the purpose you thought you were buying this basket for. Now you have two baskets. Now you find another purpose for this basket. It becomes like a thing where even if you're decluttering, you're collecting as well. So if you make it a regular practice, things that are not being used or continuously going out of your house, your house will gradually become airier and airier. And it becomes a much more stress-free way of keeping uh, the clutter down in your house and just clarity for what actually is useful in your house and what brings you joy.
So that was all you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful and uh, good luck with your own one box challenges this month. I'd love to know what you've been decluttering. Thanks so much for watching. I wish you the very best day.